When this is Nibiru Watcher, it is January 8th, 2018. And in my videos about the lens array and the sun simulator lenses that can hide and bend objects, what kind of lens may it be? Well, I suggest to you that maybe some of the layers in the lens array and my demonstration, these atmospheric lenses, which could be in the lower atmosphere, layers deep, some in outer space, but protect. Perhaps some of the layers outside the vacuum of space could be created by ionizing gas, by laser creating lenses. Is this just science fiction? Well, let's just watch what BEA Labs has been working on, BEA Systems, Future Concepts. So, in this demonstration video, they show a surveillance camera and they can't see their target. And so what the airplane does is scan a pulsed infrared, near infrared laser beam, ionizing the gas in the shape of a lens, creating a series of lenses. Look at that hexagonal lens too, right? And now they can see their target. But this plasma lens can do some other things, which I'll show you a little later. So you can see that they could do a clear spy job on their target. And then the target can also fire back, but this can also be used as a defense mechanism. So when been fired at, it creates a plasma shield defending the plane from the target. Yeah. Is this even possible? Absolutely. They've been doing it for a long time. Plasma induced, laser induced plasma. From Berkeley Labs, there is a professor doing a demonstration exactly how this works. So what they've done here is they set up a plasma field induced by a near-infrared laser, then shoot another laser through the plasma field, which sets up a weak field. And then they take a laser and accelerate it from zero to here to one GeV in a few centimeters. What is that? Well, that is one to with 15 zeros. That is extremely fast. Linear, line, linear accelerator, just like the CERN Hadron Collider, but very, in a few centimeters. This is a stunning technology. That the, and so the particles travel, if you want to believe in the particle theory, but for demonstration's sake, let's just stay with that. That these particles are basically riding in the wake of the wake field of the previous laser beam that went through it. <laughs> this is where a little mind yoga comes in, right? <laughs> so this particle rides the beam of light, accelerating it. It kind of like flying an airplane into the jet stream and you go faster, except that's not like a wave. It'd be more like a paddling surfer catching a tsunami wave and accelerating it in just a few centimeters. So in this picture, we can see the particle here writing in the wake field of the pulsed laser through the plasma field itself. So they create a plasma field with an ionized near-infrared laser, ionizing it, creating a lens, and to focus and accelerate the particle, making it more powerful uh, in, the, in the range of terravolt. Insane. And what they've this pulsed laser is so fast, it actually is changing the laser beam from nanometers to femtometers. That's the billionth of a second. Well, 15. Well, that's 15 zeros behind a one. Actually, one quadrillionth of a second wavelength. Got that? One fifty trillionth. What do they do with femto lasers? 
that is teravolt of power jammed into a femtosecond. Look what they could do with this technology with femto lasers. Micro pulsed lasers ionizing the air itself and creating 3D laser imagery. Like, in, and they've been working on this for a long time. What else can they do with this stuff? Well, in this guy's laboratory, femto lasers used to study laser matter interactions. In fact, they create new material. And this is a demonstration of some of the materials they have created. Hydrophilic matter that rapidly absorbs. Let's just watch that. Look how the water goes uphill. It's super absorbent material made by this. See how the water went uphill? And then hydrophobic material, exactly the opposite by the same laser. Check this out. Water bouncing off hydrophobic just absolutely repels it. They claim that they're going to use this hydrophobic material for good purposes, and I doubt that, you know, I mean, I believe that's possible because bacteria is born inside these things, uh, inside water, and if it can repel, then to third world countries, they're going to put the re bacteria resistant material on drinking fountains and water and utensils so that these third world countries won't get infected. Now check out the process of how they make this material real quick. In a vacuum chamber where they inject the femto laser and hit the two materials that they want to create, they're different matter. So we have the injection point where the femto laser comes in, probably through one of these injection points. Let's look at the demonstration of how this works. So here we have, let's see if we can pause it. The laser hits the material. It ionizes it. The ionized material that they want to bond these two materials against this, the laser hitting the one material, ionizing it, causing micro explosions on the surface, and then the particles are bonded to the new silicon material up here. And this is the super material made by the femto laser process. So here they're showing the particles by being displaced by the laser and being attracted to the electroplate on the other surface. <laughs> yeah, right. So then I propose to you, what do you think that does to the chemtrails? Now the low altitude chemtrails and the high altitude chemtrails when the plasma lasers are injected onto from satellite based lasers creating these atmospheric lasers uh, lenses like we saw in Rod Rodrigo Contreras Lopez YouTube channel Is this the atmospheric lens that is accelerating the particles from the sun simulator? <laughs> yeah, that's some crazy stuff, right? Let's look at some other examples of the potential atmospheric lenses that could potentially be have projected by lasers from satellite based lasers with their pulsed infrared light it has to be pulsed because it sets up a weak field look at the lens here that we see in this animated video picture after picture of the animated here we can see the potentially the atmospheric laser bending the light atmospheric laser uh, excuse me it's kind of a lengthy word Laser-induced atmospheric lens. Uh, just a theory, but certainly theories that our government is working on. And 
these could be actually in our atmosphere being put there by atmosphere by near infrared satellites orbiting projecting in front of this thing and steve olson even said that the cat's out of the bag and this is being done with lasers and got my brain thinking i've always loved lasers to see how these are these the atmospheric laser um laser induced plasma lenses that can accelerate laser beams to a much faster more powerful from a nano laser to terawatt powered at the one quadrillion rate that's insane so due to all the chemicals in the chemtrail barium strontium and whatever uh <laughs> let's look at these fibers that fall out of the sky is this a byproduct of these what they call smart dust and Margellan's fiber is this intelligent Skynet the si system that they're putting up it's crazy what is in our skies perhaps they really are growing this stuff because when the lasers when the plasma hits or the laser hits the atmosphere hits the chemtrail clouds displacing it can start to grow this metamaterial right in our very skies. Wow. Let's look at that. Look at that smart dust. See how it's reacting with its finger? This stuff falls out of the sky. Anybody's curious, by the way, after a heavy chemtrail day, go out and get yourself an ultraviolet light. They've been spotting, watching these. You can even see on YouTube. Mergellan's disease. Yeah. <laughs> now check this out. Plasma laser UFO maker. This is from Wired magazine. This is not science fiction, folks. What are they doing with this technology? Compartmentalizing it, getting groups of people to work on these lasers that can do amazing things, spectrometry and everything else. Military researchers working today on defending soldiers, ultra quick laser pulses in midair, plasma bursts. Like we showed another video, creating a defense shield, using them on around tanks and everything else, you know, force fields. But look at this. When they create these plasma balls, plasma spheres, they can do this. That the plasma, pay attention, the plasma could be modulated to an understandable signal modulation like fm like fm radio right a talking fireball nicknamed the voice of god they wanted to use it in the gulf war but was not accepted wow yeah a little premature they're gonna wait till the end time deception to let this they didn't want to let the cat out of the bag that's why globalsecurity.org hmm. yeah they didn't want to prematurely load their, their capabilities of having the voice of god so the plasma laser that Induced plasma can vibrate at a frequency, can be modulated to make audible intelligent sounds, noises, or even talking, animating people. Crazy. Remember those femto fairies? Well, imagine a talking femto fairy floating in your sky, projected there from satellite lasers. Satellite-based laser. It could be air-based as well. I mean... Who knows what's up there, right? I'm just letting you know the available technology that's out there. So in this article, shows the basic principle of laser plasma lens. It also accelerates and acts as a lens. The basic idea of a laser plasma lens is to use the transverse fields to focus electron beams using plasma jets separated by free space to achieve this. The laser plasma drives a weak field for the first plasma jet diffracts in free space there's that word diffraction so there's your lens and drives again a wake field as a result the plasma beam is generated and accelerated so here is a picture of the plasma wake field on a scanning electron microscope we could see this tsunami right here set up the shock wave the, the particle wave of that was injected riding along this wave accelerating it the design of the laser is made 
by taking two sapphire channels and see these where my mouse is here so you take two synthetic sapphires in the shape of these and they created these little tiny channels the later on this long channel here the laser travels along this path and then the plasma gas is injected here along these two points and then they charge this with thousands of volts turning the gas into a plasma and then you hit the laser and so there is basically here we see the gas going through this chamber here and going through the sapphire channel here through the two high voltage setting up a charge between the difference potential between these two channels here a little later in the discussion at the berkeley lab conference lab lecture they were showing how they inject electrons along the wake of the plasma field. The plasma field wake created by a previous laser injection creates the tsunami. Then they inject the laser, which accelerates. These are the surfers. If the injection is out of phase, then you're going to be like the surfer and ride in front of the wave, and you will not be accelerated. You'll crash and burn. A little further in the lecture, where their labs are heading today, is they want to replace the CERN Hadron Collider with laser plasma colliders to accomplish the same thing with less money and less space. So what they want to do is, once they've created a femta laser, is to repeat the process over and over in multiple stages. And there's a lot of theories of how they're going to work. Here's the waves that they want to inject along the path at the exact point. They have a lot of challenges, they're not there yet, but again, the government has compartmentalized this group of people and other group, not knowing what the real larger project really is. If they only knew. I'm not saying these people are evil in any way. They're fascinated with their science, but we can see the in this diagram, the step up process, how the laser gets boosted at all the points along the phase till they're reaching voltages in the teravolt, 10 teravolt range. A teravolt, right? That's a trillion volts. So let's watch again. Is this the very technology being used in this Facebook demonstration during the California fires? is that the platmospheric lens sets up to accelerate these particles to a much higher frequency. And again, the plasma field can be modulated, which will modulate the shape and color and magnitude and amplitude of the laser beam that goes through it as well. And it can speak in potential. Is that the ultimate project blue beam? Didn't want to let the cat out of the bag. That's why it wasn't used in Desert Storm, the voice of God. That's my opinion and my theory. <laughs> Check that out. Well, hope you liked this video. Sorry, a little off topic, but I love lasers. Thought you might inter be interested in how, what our government is up to. Please copy, like, and share this video. Have a great day.